Let's begin with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Light the fire of your love in them. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Remember what color chasuble the priest was wearing at Mass this weekend? White. We celebrated Jesus' baptism on Sunday. These days, the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord is the last day of the Christmas season. That means that the Christmas season is now officially over. At Mass this past weekend, the Gospel reading was from the Gospel of Luke. Let's read the story that the priest read from the Gospel on Sunday. It's in the Children's Bulletin. The title of the story is the baptism of Jesus. It's here in red. You can read it with a little help. I'll read it twice. The first time I'll read slowly as you see the words below. The baptism of Jesus. Some people saw a man baptizing and wondered if he was the Messiah. But he was a prophet sent to prepare the way for Jesus, John the Baptist. John said, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. A voice came from heaven to Jesus during his baptism. It said, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And this time I'll read it just the way one would talk. The Baptism of Jesus. Some people saw a man baptizing and wondered if he was the Messiah. But he was a prophet sent to prepare the way for Jesus, John the Baptist. John said, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. A voice came from heaven to Jesus during his baptism. It said, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This week we'll do lesson number eight in your textbook. It begins on page 77. The lesson is called, How Do We Become Members of the Church? In that question, the word church means the whole Catholic Church, the church of all Catholics all around the world. St. Jane Francis de Chantal is our parish church, but it's not the whole entire church. The word church is another one of those words that means two things. When the word church begins with a capital letter, it means the entire Catholic Church all over the world and all Catholics all around the world. But when the word church begins with a little letter, it means a church building, like a parish church, like the De Chantal Church building. For Catholics, the same religion is practiced at all Catholic churches all around the world in all sorts of languages. The very same gospel reading that Father Geis read on Sunday was read by all of the priests at all of the Catholic churches in this area. Our Lady of Mercy, Our Lady of Lords, Christ the King, Our Lady of Poland, St. Bartholomew's, all of them, even at the giant and beautiful Basilica of the National Shrine down in Washington, D.C. And all around the world, that same gospel reading was read on Sunday in many, many different languages. People may speak a different language or wear different clothes from what we wear or look different from us, but if they are Catholic, they are all hearing the same message when they go to their parish church, and the Mass is in the same order. We're all part of the same church, the Catholic Church. So, let's begin on page 77 and find out how to become members of the Catholic Church. If you click where it says, play voice recording number two, you will hear me reading from your textbook. You can turn to page 77 in your textbook now before you click to begin the next voice recording. And you can see the page that I'll be reading from. I'll tell you whenever we go to the next page. Follow along as I read, beginning at page 77 in your book. Every time we go to a new page, I'll tell you. Let's begin on page 77. How do we become members of the church? Jesus gave us the sacraments so that we could share in God's life. Three sacraments mark our belonging to the church. Baptism, Confirmation, and the Eucharist. Our union with the Church begins at baptism. Our membership in the Church is made complete in Confirmation and the Eucharist. These three sacraments are called the Sacraments of Christian Initiation. They help us follow Jesus and live as his followers. On that page, you see a picture of a baby being baptized. The baby is being held by the mom 
and the dad is touching the little baby. There's a priest who has water in a shell and is pouring water onto the baby's forehead. There are two other people near the priest. Perhaps those people are the baby's godparents. Turn the page and we're on page 78. Baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist make us members of the church. The church celebrates seven sacraments. The sacraments help us grow closer to God. They help us to follow Jesus. There are three sacraments that together make us members of the church. These are the sacraments of initiation. They are baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. In some parishes, people receive all three of the sacraments at the same time. In other places, people receive them at different times of their lives. Together, these sacraments welcome us into the church. Next page, we're on page 79. Baptism gives us new life in Christ. The sacrament of baptism is the first of the seven sacraments. It gives us new life in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Baptism unites us with Jesus. It is the beginning of our new life with Jesus in his church. All people who have been baptized are part of the body of Christ. We receive the sacrament of baptism only once. Some people are baptized when they are infants. Others are baptized when they are older. Next page. We're on page 80 now. When we are baptized, we are welcomed into the church. During baptism, we are placed in water three times, or water is poured on us three times. The priest calls us by our name and then says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Each one of us was baptized with water and these same words. At baptism, we receive grace. Grace is a gift from God. It is his life in us. Grace makes us holy. It helps us grow as God's children. Next page. We're on page 81 now. Confirmation strengthens our life in Christ. In the sacrament of confirmation, God gives us help to live our baptism. Confirmation is the sacrament that makes us stronger with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We first receive the Holy Spirit when we are baptized. At confirmation, the Holy Spirit gives us more strength to follow Jesus. This helps us to live our faith even when it is hard to do so. Many people are confirmed when they are older children or young adults. People are confirmed only once. Confirmation lasts forever, just like baptism. A bishop is usually the person who confirms people. He lays his hand on each person and prays. The bishop dips his thumb in holy oil he traces a cross on each person's forehead and says, Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The picture on that page shows a boy being confirmed with the words, Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Next page. 
We're on page 82 now. The Eucharist unites us with Jesus. On the night before Jesus died, he shared a meal with his followers. We call this meal the Last Supper. Jesus shared the gift of his body and blood in the form of bread and wine. Jesus asked his followers, his, the apostles, to remember him. Every time the church celebrates Mass, bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, just as they did at the Last Supper. This is done through the words and actions of the priest by the power of the Holy Spirit. Only a priest can lead us into the celebration of Mass. Jesus is really present with us in the Eucharist. The sacrament of the Eucharist is the sacrament of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The Eucharist brings us more fully into the church. Most Catholics receive the Eucharist for the first time when they are children. The Eucharist is the church's most important sacrament. It unites us with Christ and with one another in a special way. Now you can click on play the voice recording number three. Your textbook has a little paragraph about St. Peter Claver. He is mentioned in this lesson because he baptized so many people. There is more to St. Peter Claver's story than that little paragraph tells you. Peter Claver was born more than 400 years ago in Europe, in the country of Spain. He was born into a very poor family. He decided to study to become a priest when he was a young man. Six years after he began working to be a priest, he sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and arrived in what is now the South American country of Colombia. He arrived in a city called Cartagena. It was the biggest slave market in the Western Hemisphere. Every month, 1,000 enslaved people arrived in Cartagena. Peter Claver dedicated himself to the service of those enslaved people. When the slave ships would arrive, Peter would go into the ships and give food to the people. He would give them medicine, tend to the sick and dying, administer sacraments, tell them about God, and offer to baptize them. He spent 33 years in Cartagena, serving the thousands of slaves who arrived month after month. He did not lose sight of his converts when they left the slave ships. He would follow them to plantations where they were sent, and he would encourage them to live as Christians and he would beg the people holding them as slaves to treat them humanely. Peter also fought for the slave trade to be abolished, to be ended. And yes, Peter Claver baptized more than 300,000 people. There is a coloring page for Peter Claver included in the stack of saints pages that you got for Christmas. Here is what that coloring page looks like. What do you see in that picture? Talk with your mom or dad or grandparent about what you see in that picture. The picture is a sad one.
Your textbook tells you about the sacraments of baptism, the Eucharist, or communion, and confirmation. You already have been baptized. You were baptized as babies and don't even remember. Perhaps you have seen the photographs of when you were baptized. If you ask your mom, she may be happy to show you pictures of when you were baptized. Perhaps you have seen someone else be baptized. Perhaps you have a little brother who will be baptized soon. Next year, when you are in second grade, you will prepare to make your first communion and you will be able to receive the Eucharist. Before you make your first communion, you will make your first confession. Confession is one part of reconciliation, another sacrament. The other part of reconciliation is penance. You will learn about that next year. At DeChanto, children receive the sacrament of confirmation in eighth grade, and there will be lots of preparation before you receive the sacrament of confirmation. There are some new words with today's lesson. I want to make sure you hear them and you know them. Baptism is the first sacrament we receive. It gives us new life in Jesus. Grace is God's gift of his life in us. Eucharist is the sacrament of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Last Supper was the last meal that Jesus shared with his followers, the apostles, on the night before he died. We reenact that every week at Mass with communion by receiving the Eucharist. Confirmation is the sacrament that strengthens us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Many, many artists have painted their version of the baptism of Jesus. No one was there to photograph what happened, of course. We know that. So any painting is just an artist's representation of the event. I found copies of many of those paintings to share with you. I had hoped that we could look at the art together in class and talk about the art, telling which paintings we liked and which we thought might be unusual. Because we cannot meet in person for this class, that cannot happen. However, you can still look at the paintings. If you can look with your mom or dad or big sister or grandma, that would make the looking more fun. If you click on any picture, it will open to a larger size. It would be best to use a tablet or a laptop computer to look at these. I don't think that you could see much on a phone, but I'm not sure. When you look at the pictures, try to find the dove in the painting. Not all of the artists put the dove in the painting, but most did. Most of these paintings were made hundreds of years ago. Only one was made in modern times. That one is number 13. Now, look at the pretty pictures and enjoy them. There are two coloring sheets that go along with this lesson. The first depicts John the Baptist baptizing Jesus in the Jordan River. The second coloring sheet is more unusual. It shows two angels. And remember, angels are real, but they are invisible. Artists paint them, 
but angels are invisible messengers from God. The two angels in the coloring sheet are from the number one painting that you saw above, from this painting. If you click on that picture, you will see a bigger image. Then, if you click again, you will see a really big version of the painting. You can move it around and you'll see the two angels. Here is the part of the painting that shows only those two angels. And if you click on that picture of the two angels, you will see a larger version of just the two angels. You can use the colors that the artist used, or you can use any color that you like. The artist's name was Leonardo da Vinci. If you are able to color the angels, I'd love to see them. If you can bring them to class next week, I would be happy to see how you colored them. It is sad that for the second week in a row, we have not been able to meet. It is always fun to see you in person. Tuesday evenings and my time with you is one of my happy times every week, and I look forward to it. Let's say the prayers that we say at the end of every class. We'll begin with the Our Father. You know the words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, please defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke the devil, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I surely hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.